In this video, we'll be giving an overview of Divi's WooCommerce modules, also called Woo modules. And we'll be showing you how Woo modules work with Divi and also how to use Woo modules to create unique layouts for your product pages and more. We'll even briefly go through some of the key options available for each of the Woo modules. So let's jump in and get started. Go to your WordPress dashboard and make sure you have the Divi theme installed and active and ready to be used. Also, you'll want to have WooCommerce installed and active as well. And if you can, go ahead and get some products in there so you can get the full experience of using Woo modules in Divi. And once you have Divi and WooCommerce ready to go on your website, go ahead and head over to the Divi options and go to theme options and go to the builder settings and then the advanced tab. And there you can make sure and enable the latest Divi builder experience. And I'm also enabling the classic editor as well. Now we're ready to see Woo modules in action. To do that, let's get started by creating a new product. As you can see, I have a lot of products already created here with some mock content, including all the necessary product information that would be needed to show the WooCommerce elements on the product page. So let's take a look at one of the ones that have already been created, just to give you an idea of what is necessary whenever you create a product. So let's jump into this one here. As you can see, this is what a product looks like on the back end when you're editing it and creating a new one. So you'll need to enter all of the information necessary for the product, including the product title. And the here would be the product description. And of course, the product data. This is, you know, a simple product. This is the product type. I'm just going to leave it as simple. And you have all of the product data tabs here that you'll need to fill in. Uh, for now, we'll keep it simple, like a product price, a sales price. And for the inventory, maybe a SKU. Uh, enable the, the stock to be managed here and just give it a, you know, a stock quantity. And under linked products, you can go ahead and add some products to use in the upsell module, the Woo upsell module. All right, and then the attributes. Right now the attribute is size, and I've given it, you know, three values of large, medium, and small. They can be whatever. I'm just using this as a mock content for now. Go ahead and save those. And then let's go to the advanced tab. And it doesn't look like we need anything here. The main thing to do is to enable reviews. And that's about it for product data. And then we can go to our short description, add a short description here. For As far as our product goes, we still need a category if you need a product category and also a tag. And the product image, this is going to be your main product image that shows in the Woo Images module. And the product gallery would be the, the other images associated with the product. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and make sure and publish it. And now that our product is all set up, let's go ahead and check out what it looks like on a, you know, standard default WooCommerce product page in Divi. Okay, so here's our product. Product page. And all of these elements here on the product page by default are not going to be easy to update on the back end like you would when using the Divi Builder. Uh, you would have to use external CSS and, you know, get into the theme files to customize the page templates and things like that. But overall, you really are limited because you can't have control over these individual elements. So let's go back to our back end of our product page. And now all you really need to do to gain access to those Woo modules is to use the Divi Builder. So let's click on use the Divi Builder button. And as you can see, with the simple click of a button, now you have a customizable product page layout that is customizable with all of the Divi elements, including these cool Woo modules. So here's your Woo breadcrumb here at the top, Woo cart notice, 
and so on. You have the Wu image over here on the left, and it will automatically inherit the default layout. So it will be, you know, organized the same way as it was when we saw it originally without Divi deployed on the page. But the difference is now we can actually, you know, move this layout around and change the structure if we want. And of course, go into each one of these and design the modules however we want. And that's going to open up a whole lot of new doors to building completely custom product page layouts using the Divi Builder. So in addition to this Divi Builder on the back end, now we have an updated Divi page settings uh, toggle here up at the top. Two things I want to mention about this is one, the page layout can be changed um, from the you know default right sidebar or left sidebar to a no sidebar or full width. So uh, right now it's set to no sidebar. And the other thing is the product content option here. If I click on the drop down, it has default or build from scratch. As you can see, it is all already selected as build from scratch. This is because this is what gives you the functionality you see here. What we're wanting to do is build the product page from scratch using the Divi Builder. And you can see the product information or options are all still available. You can continue to update those if you need to, even after you deploy the Divi Builder. So it will work seamlessly with those modules in there. So all of these modules here are dynamic, meaning they are pulling the information in this product page dynamically. So there's no need to you know, continually update them or anything like that. The product long description has been relocated down here. And of course, you still have your product data here. All right, let's take a look at what this would look like when building on the front end. And so you'll notice that just like you would use Divi Builder to edit a normal page in Divi uh, on the front end using the Visual Builder, you can hover over your, your modules, you know, create new columns and rows and sections and all of those things. But now you can use it on the front end when designing a product page. So this will make designing a product page a whole lot easier. Now let's take a quick look at each of the Woo modules and take a look at the, you know, the key options available in those module settings. So you can get a feel as to what's out there, how to use it, things like that. There are actually 16 total Woo Commerce or Woo modules. Let's go ahead and start with the Woo Breadcrumb module. So I'm going to hover over it and open the settings. And as you can see, the the module settings is set up just like a normal Divi module with your three tabs of content design and advanced. And for the Woo breadcrumb settings, you'll have some, you know, unique content available. For example, you have the uh, product, which is standard to all Woo modules. The product is where you, you know, select the product associated with this module, which will then pull that information. Um, dynamically from that product. You can select this product or you can actually use the latest product uh, that has been added to your shop or any individual product here. But since we're actually building a product page for this product, we're going to use this product. And then the home text, this is where you can change, you know, the home text on the breadcrumb. So if you want to change it to something like all products, if you're featuring all products on the home page, or change the link to something else for the home page. And you even have a separator option, which right now it has that, you know, backslash there, but you can change it to maybe a dash or something like that. Aside from that, let's jump over to the design tab. And you'll notice that actually you have all of the common design options that are available in all of our Divi modules. And the one unique to the breadcrumb would be the text module, which has the ability to change the styles of the body text differently from the link text. So one thing I could do is maybe, you know, change the color of my text, you know, increase the font size a bit, 
And then maybe I can go over to my link options and then style my links a different color. And so that'll give you some distinction between what's a link and what's the current page. And the next Woo module is the Woo Cart Notice module. And that one is right here directly under our breadcrumb. And I'm gonna hover over it and open the settings. The Under the Content tab, you have an option to select your product associated with the cart notice. And if I go to my Design tab, you'll have some you know, key options for targeting the elements within this module or this Woo element here. For example, the button can be customized. Maybe change the background of the module from this blue to a green, something like that. And I could, you know, move this to the very top of the page if I wanted to or somewhere else. Remember, none of these elements have to stay where they are by default. You can move them around, put them in new rows. Really, there's no limitations. It's just like building a new page using the Divi Builder. The next Woo module is the Woo Images module here. So I'm just going to hover over that module and open the settings. And they have some elements under here. You'll see that you have the option to show the featured image, which we do. You have the option of showing the gallery images, which are the images right below them right there. And show the sales badge or the sale badge, which is actually showing right here. And so if I turned off show gallery images and show sale badge, you'll see you know just a nice clean featured image. But let's go ahead and toggle those back on. The Woo image design settings, if we go to our design tab, you'll see you have some key option groups to target the different elements in the module, like the image will actually target the design of all of the images, including the gallery images. So take note of that. For example, if I put a border here, radius or an image rounded corners, it's going to add the rounded corners on all of the images. Uh, let's go ahead and add a box shadow here. You'll see that the box shadow is added to all of our images individually or collectively. Aside from the image, you can uh, target the design of your sale badge. So if I wanted to give it, you know, a different color, I can do that. Let's save that out. Let's go to our Woo title module. That's this one here. And we're going to keep this product selected. Let's check out the design tab. You'll notice that this is very uh, similar to like a text module or, or blurb module in that it has the ability to change the title text, choose the title level if you want. Maybe we want to make it a little bolder. Let's you know, make it semi bold change the text size. Let's go ahead and save that out. Let's go on to the Woo rating module, which currently isn't visible on the front end because we don't have any ratings for this product yet. And let's go ahead and add one really quickly so we can see it. Let's scroll down to the tabs here, click on the review tab. Let's go ahead and give this product a review or excuse me, a rating first. And let's also give it a review. Click Submit. All right, now we can see it right there with our rating on the left and the customer review link or count on the right. Let's go back to our visual builder. Let's open up our Woo rating module settings. Of course, we have our product selection option here. Let's go to our design tab. You'll notice that we have the option to change the layout from an inline to a stacked layout which there you go. You can see that the two elements are now stacked upon one another we go to the star rating. This is actually going to control the, you know, the style of the stars, change the color and maybe increase the size a bit. The text option group will control the customer review count styling over there. So let's go ahead and you know give this a new color as well. Maybe increase the font size also. And let's go ahead and save it out. It's coming along. Let's go to our next Woo module, which is the Woo price module. Let's open up those settings. 
and let's go ahead and jump to the design tab and see what we have. You can see we have the option group of price text, which will control the styling of the price text directly. Uh, you also have a sale old price text and a sale new price text. So this, of course, is a product that is on sale. And on the left, you'll notice that that is the sale old price. And on the right is the sale new price. So let's go ahead and change the color of the sale new price text. Uh, let's make it the green. And maybe we'll make that sale old price text a little darker. And let's go ahead and save it out. Uh, let's go over to our Woo description module. So the Woo description module, which pulls in those uh, either a short description or the long description. Right now, the description type is set to short description, but we could change it to the regular normal or long description under the design tab. And this basically is a lot like a, a regular Divi text module with, you know, options for body or paragraph tag, content, uh, link, content, lists, and block quotes. If you have the, that sort of thing in your description, let's go ahead and make some changes to the background here. Give it a background color, very light gray here. And let's go ahead and give it some spacing and let's align that to the left a little bit. Give it a negative left margin of 5%. All right. And then lastly, let's give it a box shadow to make it pop a little bit. And let's save that out. Looking good. Let's go over to our next Woo module, which is the Woo Add to Cart module. Open up those settings. Let's check out the elements under the content tab. You'll see that you have the ability to show quantity field. And that's this one right here, the gray field with the white uh, number one there, which obviously you can change that quantity when buying the product. Um, I could also hide the stock number here. Let's jump to the design tab. The text option would control the styling of the, the, the stock. So we could change that to a different color if you wanted to. Maybe increase the size a bit. And let's go ahead and look at the other options we have. This option group is fields, and that controls the quantity field. So maybe I want to give that a darker background color. Dropdown menus are basically referring to you know, product types like a, a variable product where you would have some drop down options to choose from when buying the product. So um, if ever you have those, the drop down menu styling will, will come in handy when styling those elements. The button, of course, styles the add to cart button. So I can click to use custom styles for that button. And let's make it a white text button and give it a background color. Let's go ahead and save that out. And let's go to our next Woo module, which is the Woo Meta module. Let's open those settings. And much like the Woo breadcrumb module, you'll have under the content area here, you have the option to add a custom separator for this meta content. Uh, the elements uh, section here allows you to show or hide the SKU and show or hide the categories of your meta data there and also show and hide the tags. This one doesn't have any tags associated with it, but you would be able to hide those as well. Under the design tab, you have a layout option which allows you to choose inline or stacked. And of course, we have text options which control the body text, and also the link font or link text options as well. So maybe we want to make that link text a different color so it's more readily known that it's a link. All right, let's go down here to our Woo Tabs module, and let's open those settings. The Woo Tabs module 
includes tabs for description, additional information, and reviews. These three also, or Divi also has separate modules for the description, additional information, and reviews as well. Uh, but this WooTabs module will include all of those for you. And here is where you can choose to disable any of those tabs if you want, or to show them all. Let's jump over to the design tab and you'll see that you have the body text option, which works a lot like the text module. All of these elements can be targeted to control or style the body text of your description and additional information and reviews. Also the tab text, this is a lot like the Divi tab module. So you can actually give an active tab background color, something like that. Uh, inactive tab background color. Let's go ahead and make, give that a dark color. And let's go ahead and add our tab text color to be white. And let's increase the size of the text a bit. All right, so you get the idea. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's click on the additional information just to show you. This is actually pulling from the additional information that you've entered on the product page when adding your product. Right now it's showing the attributes, or in this case, the one attribute, which is size, and then the values for that attribute. Under the reviews tab, you have the option of adding a new review or reviewing, or excuse me, or viewing all of the reviews that have already taken place or ratings that have already taken place. All right, let's go down here. Uh, our next Woo module is the Woo upsell module. Let's go ahead and click on this one. And this will look a lot like a Divi shop module. If you are familiar with the shop module, it has a lot of the same content options here of, you know, the ability to set how many products you want to show, uh, how many columns, and then the order of those items. If you go to the design tab, you have all of these options to target the many elements within this module, uh, like the overlay. That would be this overlay when you hover over the, the product image. Um, you can change the you know, overlay icon color to you know, that pink color there. Uh, the image options here will target the, uh, each of the product images within the module. So if you wanted to give it a rounded corner, you could do that. Title text, let's go ahead and give it a, you know, a darker color. Maybe make the font weight bold. And that's this title up here. By default, it will say you may also like. So it's an upsell. All right, let's uh, increase the text size a little bit. Let's go down here. You have some more options like product title text. Go ahead and give it a, you know, a bold and increase the size a bit. All right, let's go to our price text, the next one. Let's give it a matching green color there and increase the size a bit. Let's make that font weight bold as well. All right, let's go ahead and save that out. Right, so there's your Woo Upsell module. And the last one here is actually the Woo Related Products module, which pulls in the products that you have associated with your current product by category or tags, things like that. So if you have any uh, of any products that share the same category or tag, it will show as related products. This is a lot like the shop module as well, and very similar to the Woo upsell module in the content options and also in the design options, which allow you to target all those same elements. And because these two modules here are alike, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the module styles from the Woo upsell module, and I'm gonna paste it into my Woo related products module. And there you can see that 
the styles have been updated. The only thing I really need to do is change my sale badge and also my Wu uh, star rating here. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So first let's do the star. Let's change that to my pink color. Let's do the sale badge color. Let's change that to pink as well. All right, so really easy to update the design there. Now these next Woo modules that we're gonna uh, add to this layout are actually already included as a part of another Woo module. So what I mean is if I take this Woo Add to Cart module and you'll notice that it also includes the Woo stock element there. Well, Divi includes a Woo stock module as well so that in case that you want to, you know, separate that Woo stock from this module and include it somewhere else, you can. Let's go ahead and add a new module here just to show you. And I'll just do a quick search. Let's go ahead and add our Woo stock. There it is. All right, and so pull my Woo stock settings over here. Yeah, and there you can see it's really small that down there, but Let's go to the design options and see what we have here. You'll notice that we have the in stock text. Right now we have 10 in stock, so that's what we're seeing here. So I can control the design of this element using these options. If it was a text or a message that says out of stock, you could target the style of that text with this option group. And if it's on back order, it'll have a, you know, a message or a notification text there that's on, that it's on back order, you can style that text element from here as well. The next one is actually our Woo Gallery module. So right now there is a Woo Gallery that's built into the Woo Image module. Um, but if you wanted to add one separately to your page, you can do that by adding a new module and then finding the Woo Gallery. Now the Woo Gallery module will work a lot like the regular Divi Gallery module. You'll see that by default it will show in a slider. Um, let's go to the Design tab and change that layout to a grid. And since we're showing books here, I'll change the thumbnail orientation to Portrait. And much like the you know, regular Divi Gallery module, you have the similar design options for the overlay to style that. Also the title, caption, pagination, if you have a lot of them and you want to uh, show pag pagination, you can do that and style that text there. Let's jump over to the content and let's look at what we have here. We have the ability to show or hide the title and the caption. So we can get rid of that. You can hide the pagination as well. Let's go ahead and save that out. And you can see that um, we can, you know, have a completely custom Woo gallery that's separate from our Woo image module here. And the next one is the Woo additional information module. And that information is included in the Woo tabs module. You see that additional information there. But if you wanted to add that separately outside of the Woo Tabs module, you can do that. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and add it right underneath our Woo Meta module there. Let's go ahead and search for Woo Additional con Info. There it is. And as you can see, it will show my additional information which is for this product, the size attribute with a few size values here. Under the elements, you can click to show the title or not to show the title. You may want to, you know, add a title using a regular Divi text module above here or whatever. You can do that as well. Under the design tab, you have the options of targeting things like the attribute text, as you can see, this would target the text there that says size, the size attribute. 
You can target the title text as well. And the regular text here, um, if you, for example, change the color here, you can see that it changes the values for my attribute. Let's go ahead and save that one out. And the last one we're going to look at is the Woo Reviews module. And the Woo Reviews are actually included in the Woo Tabs module as well. So that same content uh, can be added to your page separately with the Woo Reviews module. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add one right, right down under here. So there's the Woo Reviews. You can see that that shows the reviews that have been submitted and also a form that allows you to add a rating and enter a review and click submit. See the elements allow you to show or hide the author avatar here. And to show or hide the comment count. So if I click that, you'll see that that top title there will disappear. The design tab controls a lot of different things because we have a lot of different elements in this Woo Reviews module, things like fields um, for the, the review form there. The image of the avatar can be targeted. Um, just the body text of the element can be targeted there. Title text, uh, the metadata right there for your author and date, comment text, the star rating. So there's a number of different elements you can target. It's a lot of powerful features here. The button can be styled. All right, let's save that out. And here's the final result of the design changes we made to our custom product layout using the Woo modules. And let's go ahead and click the add to cart button. You'll see our custom cart notice will appear at the top right there. And there's the overview of the Woo modules and all of their unique settings. In addition to Woo modules, Divi has also integrated uh, WooCommerce content and made it available when editing a product page. So whenever you want to design a new product page, uh, you can actually use regular Divi modules and then pull in the WooCommerce product data using the dynamic content feature. And let me show you how to do that. For example, um, all right now, currently this product page is built using strictly Woo modules, uh, but I could easily add a Divi module. Let's say I want to add a toggle module here. I can do that. And let's go and give this toggle title a and call it description. And then now let's go ahead and take out this default content and let's select the use dynamic content icon. And you'll see all of the WooCommerce product dynamic content options available. I'm going to select the product description. And let's go ahead and open the toggle and you'll see that that description has been added dynamically to this Divi toggle module. Go ahead and save that. And so you can see how this opens the doors to create, you know, multiple toggles displaying, you know, your additional information, your reviews, things like that, all within a regular Divi module. And this creates wonderful opportunities to design some amazing product pages in Divi.